76 year old lady with a long standing carpal tunnel syndrome. Here we're going to run through the anatomy of the median nerve, which you can see here uh, with the asterisk right above it. That's the short head of the biceps muscle that it runs just medial to. Now we're just going to go distal. You can see how it tracks medial to the short head of the biceps muscle. Here again you can see the median nerve. It is under the humeral head of the pronated teres muscle and it also tracks between the humeral and ulnar head of the pronated teres muscle. Here we are making the pronated teres translucent and again you can see the course of the median nerve. Now we're making the pronated teres muscle visible again, and we're going distally. Now we're making some of the flexor muscles translucent, and now we're going to focus on the wrist. Here you can see highlighted the median nerve, flexor carpi radialis tendon, palmaris longus tendon, and flexor retinaculum. Now we're making the flexor retinaculum translucent. Again, you can see how that median nerve courses just underneath it. Here, we're gonna focus on some of those nerve fascicles and bundles that are within each nerve. We're just zooming in here on a cross-section view of the median nerve. And again, you can appreciate how there are separate bundles within the nerve. And that is important on identifying the nerve on ultrasound. Now we're gonna go over the pro position of carpal tunnel injection. Here we have the probe in a volar axial type of plane, and the needle is at a plane to the probe. Now we're just making the probe invisible, and we're going to see the course of the injection, which is essentially just a direct shot ulnar to the palmaris longus tendon. And here you can see the needle going just under the flexor retinaculum, again ulnar to the palmaris longus tendon, and that injected should spread throughout the carpal tunnel and help carpal tunnel syndrome. Here's a different approach where we're going between the palmaris longus tendon and the flexor carpi radialis tendon. The needle is essentially directly above the median nerve. It is also close to the palmocutaneous branch of the median nerve as well, which you can see highlighted here. Left side of the screen is uh, ulnar, right is radial. And here's a pretty detailed layout of the main tendons that are involved to be aware of during this injection that are near the median nerve. Here's a little close-up view of it. And really the flexor carpi radialis and flexor pallus longus tendons are the tendons that you want to try to keep in mind when isolating the median nerve. One way you can easily figure out the median nerve, which appears to be just right at the top of the screen at 12 o'clock, is basically, um, you can also follow approximately as it goes between the two muscle layers of the flexor digitorum profundus and superficialis. So here's our median nerve, uh, basically in the wrist crease. So 832, we're just going to go proximal. And as you go proximal, it dives down. You see that nerve start to migrate. Basically between the two flexor muscles. So we're going to go proximal. And, and here it is between the flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus muscles. And here it is again. And this is a really easy way to identify the nerve, just to see how it migrates between those two muscle layers. None of the tendons do that. And again, here we are back towards the wrist. The nerve itself is pretty big. Also, you can appreciate the flexor carpi radialis tendon just to the right of that. And again, here's that flexor carpi radialis tendon and the flexor pollicis longus tendon, basically forming a triangle with the median nerve. The flexor digitorum superficialis and the profundus tendons right below that. Pronator quadratus muscle, and basically uh, forming the floor of this whole flexor uh, compartment. Beneath all those flexor tendons, going from the uh, radius to the ulna. Can make up the flexor retinaculum as well. And here is just a thin little layer above the median also, nerve. Uh, See the, um, here's the pisiform, see the uh, ulnar artery and the ulnar nerve right next to it between the artery and the uh, pisiform. And if we go to the radial side, see, clip, radial artery. And here there's no corresponding radial nerve near the radial artery. One thing you can also check out is, you can look at the median nerve and long axis here.
And the median nerve actually is very flattened, and this lady wound up having surgery, and the median nerve was described as like a worm, like a little flat worm, just from chronic carpal tunnel syndrome. So we're going to turn on it. So it's right above the tendon. In a long axis, you may try to look for a notch sign or basically a sign that the nerve gets pinched or thinned uh, distally as it enters the carpal tunnel. Sometimes you can see a notch sign. So right side of the screen is proximal. It does look thickened overall. See just a thickened uh, median nerve. It looks like it's a little bit thinner proximally. So um, consistent with uh, carpal tunnel syndrome. And it is a pretty subtle finding. Also, we can look at the contour of the scaphoid bone. So here we are, we got the distal radius and your scaphoid in a typical peanut shape. Some irregularity there of the um, distal pole of the scaphoid. And now we're going into the scaphoid trapezium articulation. And then we're going into trapezium first metacarpal. And that's the base of the first metacarpal between the trapezium, a site that's very often arthritic. See just irregularity of the bone consistent with arthritic type changes. Here we are with the articulation of the lunate and the scaphoid. This is the palmar scaphoid lunate ligament here. So we're going to go ahead and do our injection, we're going to feel basically uh, between the flexor carpi radialis tendon and the palmaris longus. I'm going to try to go right to the side of the median nerve, kind of between that and the uh, flexor carpi radialis tendon. 840, looks like I'm pushing right over flexor carpi radialis tendon, so we're kind of right above the median nerve. I'm going to go a little bit radial, I don't want to go right on top of it. And here we are, we're in short access to the needle, so you don't see the needle, you'll just see tissue moving, but you can get a very accurate sense where the needle is, and here it is, just radial to the median nerve. So people try to dissect it away from the retinaculum. Okay. Try to inject A41. And that's where our needle is heading, and you just want to make sure that you're under the retinaculum. So here's our initial flash, and it's right on top of the nerve, and under the retinaculum, you can see it's spread throughout the carpal tunnel. And again, this lady actually wound up having a good response to the injection, but it didn't take care of all of her pain, so she wound up getting carpal tunnel release.